Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, Microsoft and Bit Project event. I'm glad you're here. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. So while we're here, we want you to have fun. This is not a um, science class. This is not something you're going to be graded on. So make sure you have fun with the project. Bring a positive attitude. Communicate clearly. So if you have a question, type it in the Q&A panel and give us a hint as to what you uh, are really asking so that we can help answer it. And then uh, finally, participate. We'd love for you to participate in the Q&A and tell us how you're feeling and how the project is going. All right, so today we're using a Microsoft Teams live event. Here are some controls you should look at. So um, on the left-hand side, you're gonna see the meeting. Uh, you'll see my video, you'll see the PowerPoint, um, and you'll also be able to play or pause the event. You can change the volume by using the volume button. You can turn captions on. We have captions in six different languages, including Hindi, um, English, Spanish, even Klingon, if you're interested in that. And you can adjust the caption quality and video quality. You can also go to full screen if you want a more full view of the event. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see the Q&A so that you can ask us questions, you know, say yes or no, tell us how it's going. So use that Q&A by typing your question in. You can put your first name if you want, or you can put anonymous and then use the paper airplane icon to send your question forth. All right, so remember that this is a activity where you can build something on your own, but have your parents help. Today's materials can be found at aka.ms forward slash BITPRJ. They're also posted in the Q&A. Listen to them as we read them aloud so that you know what the materials are. Gather the materials with your parents' permission or help. All right, and then finally, leave us some feedback after the event is over. So if you'd like, ask your parents or with your phone, take a picture of this QR code. And after the event, you can tell the Bit Project team how they did. All right, so without further ado, let's get Bit Project up here. And uh, I'm gonna introduce uh, Viva to you and she's gonna go over today's project. Uh, Viva, are you there? Hi. Um, awesome. Hello, everyone. I hope all of you are having a great afternoon, and I hope you all are ready to have some fun. So today, whoops, okay. So today we'll be learning about a really cool of the human body, which is the eye. And so some of the materials that you'll be needing for today um, include a ruler or measuring tape, um, some markers and pens, a paper, scissors to cut, aluminum foil, um, a cardboard tube, and some plastic wrap or any kind of plastic from it a container you can get it so if you want to take five minutes to gather all of these materials feel free to go ahead and do so hey Viva. Um, while we wait, would you like to know some fun facts about the eye? Yeah. Okay, so a really cool one is that the human eye can tell apart 10 million different colors. I didn't even know there was that much colors. 10 million colors? Are there really 10 million colors? Can you name all of them, uh, Lily? Blue red, light blue, medium blue, aquamarine, teal, mint. Okay, I, I wasn't <laughs> serious, but, but yeah, that might take 10 million minutes to name. Hmm. I wonder who thought of all these colors. It's really amazing to see how many colors we can see, and that's because of the eye.
Okay, so if everyone has had a chance to gather the materials, um, we can go ahead and get started. And right before starting the hands-on activity, I can always go back to this slide if anyone needs it. So what exactly is the eye? The eye is an organ that helps us see. And seeing is a huge part of what we do as humans. So what exactly is an organ? Organ, organs are made up of tissues and tissues are made up of cells. So we can see that there is a lot of structure in our body and cells are the basic units of life. So they make up every single part of the human body and really of life on this planet. So the eye is an organ that is made, made up of these cells and tissues that work together to help provide sight. But it's not just sight that's important to us. We use that sight to understand our environment and understanding our environment is a huge part of what we do. So in order to really see, what do we need first? Can you guess what we need? We first need light, right? It's pretty obvious. But how does this light travel? So as we go through this activity today, we'll be looking at these body parts or these parts of the eye outlined here. And you can see and appreciate how complex our eye truly is. So light, where does it come from? Light can come from the sun, it can come from your lampshade, but it can come from any source really. So light, what it's going to do is, it's going to enter the outer portion of your eye called the cornea, and I can go back here. The cornea is the outermost layer of your eye, and it allows your eye to gather in all that light it needs to be able to see. Once that light gets past the cornea, it's going to go through the pupil. And the pupil is a tiny opening that collects light. Now, if you have ever noticed, when you turn on and off um, a light switch, have you ever noticed your, your pupils changing size? The size of your pupil depends on how much light is entering your eye. So I would encourage you to try um, on your own to see what happens to the size of your pupil when there is no light and what happens to your pupil when light is there. But basically, this light is going to enter the pupil and this pupil will collect that light. Surrounding the pupil is another structure called the iris. Now the iris is probably one of the most um, identifiable parts of our eye. So what color is your iris? Irises can come in many different colors, such as blue, brown, which is what most people have, green. And finally, perhaps one of the most important parts of our eye is the lens. The lens is what will take in that image provided by that light, and it's going to reflect it to the back of your eye. Now, what does, it, what does that exactly mean, right? So think of wearing glasses. Glasses are made up of two lenses. Those lenses are able to take in light and provide you with an image that you're able to see. Well, the lens, is going to project that image to the back of your eye called the retina. And what is the retina? The retina is a tissue. Remember, we had gone over this term. The retina is a tissue that is made up of cells. And what this retina will do is that it will change the light into information that the brain can understand. And once our brain understands that information, 
we're actually able to comprehend what we're actually seeing. And so this is how we see it. But probably one of the more interesting parts of sight is actually seeing color. Color is a huge part of our lives, isn't it? So the retina is primarily responsible for uh, providing um, color, right? So the retina is made up of cells. These cells are rod and cone cells. As we mentioned earlier, cells are the basic units of light. And these cells create tissues. And in this case, rod cells and cone cells create the retina. Cone cells will help us see color and rod cells will help us see in the dark. So based on the picture on the left, can you tell which is a rod cell and which is a cone cell? Why don't you um, participate or maybe type it in the chat if you're interested? Oh, I can't wait to see these answers, but the rod cell kind of looks like a rod, right? Am I correct in, in, in kind of questioning that? Yeah. So we rod and cone cells are have part their names because of how they look like. Okay, let's rod see what people say. Oh, looks like Thomas here says, I think the first is a rod and the second is a cone. What do you think, Viva? Well, I think Thomas is uh, exactly right. The rod cell is on the left and the cone cell is on the right. They're named after their respective shapes. Another interesting question um, to consider is um, when you're in a place that doesn't have a lot of light, um, which cells are more active based on what they do? Okay, so now that we have gone over the basic parts of the eye, we are going to look at an interesting part of our eyesight called the blind spot. But what exactly is a blind spot? Well, it has to do with how information from the retina gets to the brain. So if you remember from the picture in the previous slide, um, the retina is converting that image, that light that we get into information that our brain can use. And what is connecting the brain and retina? It is a part called the optic nerve. Nerves are part of the nervous system and the optic nerve is part of that. So the optic nerve is connecting the retina and the brain, which is really cool. So we will see how the presence of the optic nerve can affect our vision. So, let us get started. And for this, I can show um, what I will be doing. Okay, so now we'll be checking our blind spot. So what you'll need is you'll need paper. And what you'll have to do is on the left side of your paper, you're going to draw a star. So something like this. If you feel that the paper is too big, you can always cut it into a rectangle, but this size is also fine. So once we have drawn, um, a star on the left side. Now on the right side, we're going to be drawing a dot. 
and you want this dot to be far away. So something like this. You want it to be a good distance apart. So now, once you have drawn the star on the left side and the dot on the right side, we will close our left eye and look at the star using your right eye. So I would close my left eye, and if I keep the paper in front of me with the right eye, I will be looking at the star. And so, if once we have covered our left eye and we're looking at the star with our right eye, we're going to move our paper kind of back and forth. So you want to keep on moving back and forth, and eventually you'll notice for a brief instant that you don't see any star. Is anyone noticing the same thing? What do you see when you uh, close your left eye and then look at the star with your right eye? What are you seeing right now? I'd be interested to know. I accidentally got like a pink piece of paper, so I think I need to change the color back to white because all I see is pink right now. But let's see what everyone else has to say. <laughs> yeah, any color is fine, actually. It doesn't just have to be white. It can be any color of your choice, really. Hey, Bibba. So Thomas says for them it gets blurry, but they can still see it. Yeah. So what happens is that sometimes we it may not work on your first try, but you have to actually keep on moving it. So let's say I'm holding it like this, and maybe it's probably a bit far from me, but you have to keep on moving back and forth. You don't want to do it extremely fast because that that's not going to do anything. You kind of want to move it slowly back and forth. And eventually, um, you should see a difference. Another way of actually seeing your blind spot is you can actually look at a clock. You can maybe cup your hands together, look at the clock, and then kind of blink with your eye. Um, and that should actually, um, by doing that, you should be able to see a difference in what you're seeing. So that's another way of checking your blind spot. Now, let's repeat the same thing for the right eye. So right now, since we were closing our left eye, we want to look at the dot now. So we're going to close our right eye, and we're going to look at the dot with our left eye. We're going to move it back and forth. until something should happen. So has anyone been able to see a difference when, when moving the paper back and forth? What do you see for your blind spot? Hmm, I'm trying it out right now. I think for me, it gets blurry when it gets closer.
close up, when the paper gets close up? So it does get kind of blurry, but what ends up happening is that this image might change. It may not get blurry, but if you hold it at the right angle, you may not be able to actually see it. And that is what measuring our blind spot is. So I'll share my screen again. So once we have repeated it with both eyes, we actually see that the image that you're trying to see with your opposite eye will disappear. And that's really interesting. Why do you think the image is supposed to disappear? Does anyone have any interesting theories on why it might disappear? Okay, so when we close our left eye, what image were we looking at? The star or the dot? Hmm, can I make a guess before we have more responses? Yeah, sure. Um, we're, when we closed our left eye, were we trying to look at the dot? Well, when we were closing our left eye, right, we were trying to look with our right eye at an image. So we were looking at the star. So oh, I see. Yeah, and similarly, when we were closing our right eye, we were looking at the dot with our left eye. So we're, so we're checking opposite sides of our eye. So it's really interesting because Technically, like, why should an image disappear right before our eyes? Does anyone have any guesses on, like, why would an image disappear? It's an interesting question. Mm, we'll probably get more responses, but can I make a guess too? Yeah, sure, Lily. Um, hmm, does it have to do with like our blind spot? Yeah, it absolutely does. And perhaps a way to think about it is what did we just talk about before doing the blind spot activity? What parts of the I did we talk about? Well, as provided by this image right here, right? We are talking about the retina and the optic nerve. So we know that probably this blind spot phenomenon has to do with something between the retina and the optic nerve. Okay, so now that we have gone over our blind spot activity, let's review some questions. So which cells in the retina are mainly active in the dark? Mm, what? Sorry. No, um, yeah, you can continue. Um, uh, looks like we'll have to wait for some more responses. Uh, 
I think someone mentioned Rod Bell. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Because we had mentioned that cone cells are involved in us being able to see color. So it absolutely makes sense that rod cells would mainly be in, involved in seeing objects in the dark. And since we're talking about rod cells and cone cells, we know that after all, they are cells. And we know that cells are the smallest units of light. So going back to the very beginning, if cells make tissues, what do the tissues make? Oh, can I make it? Yeah, sure. Is it like things like your brain? Yeah, exactly. Tissues make up all of the important stuff in our body. And if tissues make up the brain, the stomach, the eyes, what are those called? I think it starts with an O. Yeah, exactly. Tissues make organs. And organs as we know it perform functions that are really important for us. And perhaps another important part of the eye, which itself is an organ, um, connected to the eye is the optic nerve. So when we were doing the blind spot activity, we were really testing our optic nerve. So what does the optic nerve lack such that we have a blind spot? And a hint is you can think about what cells make up the retina. Ooh, can I take it? Back? Yeah, sure, Lily. Um, is it the cone and rod cell? Yeah, exactly. Um, cone and rod cells make up the retina. And if the optic nerve doesn't have those cells, then the optic nerve is not able to see it's not able to gather that light to actually get an image which is why when we're checking our blind spot what we're actually seeing is uh, where the retina ends and where the optic nerve begins because the optic nerve doesn't have either of those cells necessary for color or vision in general we won't be able to see an image at all. Okay, so now we are gonna move on to a really fun part. So we'll be building a model of our kaleidoscope. Has anyone played with a kaleidoscope before? Yes, it was very colorful. Yeah, and they're oftentimes really pretty. And so, since we're talking about kaleidoscopes, um, how does it work with our eyes? It's really interesting because we can see color, we see an image, we see how light can enter a kaleidoscope. So, it's pretty interesting. And we'll be doing a really simple model of a kaleidoscope 
So it probably is a little bit different from kaleidoscopes that you're used to seeing, but it's nevertheless a really interesting activity. So let's get started. So does anyone need to see the materials list um, before we get started? I can go back to that slide. Um, let's see, Sammy says, when I use a blue marker on plastic with a black background, it looks per like purple. Hmm, interesting comment, Sammy. Yeah, that's really interesting. And um, on a side note, color is, you know, perceived dif differently by different organisms. So how humans see color is different from how a dog would see color actually. So that's really interesting. So I will um, get started with the activity and okay and here we get started. So the first thing that you will need is a cardboard tube. It doesn't have to be particularly big. Um, you can get this cardboard tube from anywhere, like your kitchen, for example. And what we're first going to do is we will actually be making this. So if you see, it is like a long rod and it's uh, kind of triangle shaped right here in the center. And so how we'll first start is you're, you're going to want to take some aluminum foil. And if you notice with the aluminum foil, there's kind of a more um, shiny side and a more dull side. We want to work with the shiny side. So keep that in mind when we get started on building it. So what uh, uh, that mm -hmm. device looks like. Um... I don't know if you know the candy Toblerones. It looks just like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I actually love uh, Toblerones. They're so yummy. And they are um, exactly shaped like this. That's so cool. Oh, and Sammy just dropped an interesting fact in the comments. He said, and do you know that snakes don't have eyelids? Wow. Interesting That's comment, Sammy. That's really interesting. So what we're first going to do is we're, we're going to cut out this aluminum foil and we're going to cut it four inches by six inches. So take your ruler, make sure it's on the inches side and you want it to be four inches wide and six inches tall. So four inches wide and six inches tall. And it should look like a rectangle. So once I am done drawing this, I will show it up so that you all can see it. So if you can see up close, you can see the lines I have made. So that's four by six. So if you have a cardboard tube that's kind of um, small or larger than this, then make sure that the length of your um, aluminum uh, matches the length of this. So now we're going to be taking our scissors and we're going to cut it out. So if you need help, uh, using the scissors, be sure to ask. And on a side note, does anyone know what aluminum is? Oh, I remember this from organic chemistry. It's an element, right? Yeah, exactly. Aluminum is a very important um, element that we all use. And 
for this activity in particular, it's great. So now that I have cut it four, four by six inches, what I'm actually going to do is to make this a bit more sturdy, I'm actually going to uh, tape it to some paper. So I'll tape it to some paper because we will be folding this and you want it to be sturdy. So make sure that the paper is, you know, the same size because then you can tape it together and then we're going to fold it. So once I cut out this paper, this is a rough approximation, but um, once you have your aluminum foil, make sure the shiny part of the aluminum foil is on the outside. Okay, this is important. So shiny part should be on the outside. You stick it to the paper, so the paper is on the back. You can use uh, multiple sheets of paper that are the same size um, if you want this to be a bit more sturdy. But once you tape this together, you're going to fold it into thirds. So when I fold it into thirds, what I'm going to be doing is I'll be folding one third, right? And I'll be folding the other side, the other side such that we get this pyramid. So this was in thirds and I just folded it into a tiny pyramid and you can secure this with a piece of tape. So all of that reflective paper or the aluminum foil should be on the inside. So this will be, this will kind of mimic the mirrors that are inside a typical kaleidoscope. Wow, I did not know making a kaleidoscope would be so easy. Thanks, Viva. Yeah, and actually um, building a kaleidoscope um, can be made easy by just using the materials that you have at home. So it is a great activity. And it's also important to note that um, this is aluminum foil. And aluminum foil is not as reflective as a mirror, right? So think about it. If your lens in your eye, if it were made out of aluminum, we wouldn't be able to see very well. So just keep that in in mind. So it's supposed to be reflective, but it's not exactly like a mirror just because of the material itself. Okay. So now what I'll do is now that we have our cardboard tube, I'm going to stick this inside. So once I stick it inside, it, it's going to fit like pretty snug. So you're going to get this. It should look, look like this on the inside. And and optional, you can put in you can secure like this end. You can cover it with plastic wrap if you want to, but it's not needed because we'll be needing it for the other side. So now we'll be making the end of the cap. So the cap actually looks something like this. So you can see how I have this plastic at the end. This is from, um, a plastic container, but you can use plastic wrap. Just make sure that when you're using plastic wrap, um, it should cover the end pretty tight. So to make this, what we're going to do is we're going to take, if you have another cardboard tube at hand, 
um, that's great. But what you're going to do is you're going to on on the cardboard cube measure about one half to one inch. So I'm going to make a line here. So you can see on my cardboard tube, I've made a line. So this is important because we'll be making the cap and we're actually going to cut the end such that we have kind of like a circle. So going along that line, you want to cut you want to cut this way so as i'm going around the cardboard tube i'm forming the circle and so there we have it right so now that i have this now you can use plastic to secure the end so once you secure the end you'll be getting a cap like this so this is where we can actually fill in all of the beads awesome hey viva so we have a couple people in the chat um, mike and sammy were saying could you just go over how to make the triangle again with the foil yeah sure so what you're going to do is you're going to cut out a four inch by six inch rectangle. Now, um, if it ends up being a bit big for your cardboard cube, just try cutting it such that um, it will fit inside. So once we have cut out our aluminum foil, which is ideally four by six inches. We're going to keep the shiny part on the front. And on the back, we'll put paper. So you can tape the paper to the back of the aluminum foil just so that uh, this triangle will be more sturdy. Then what we're going to do is once we have taped it, let me just fold it. So fold it such that you have like a pyramid. So you get something like something like this. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, sure. So once we have our cap, we have our triangle within that cap, you can fill it in with, you know, beads of your choice. And if you don't have beads, beads that's okay um small buttons or like any small um circular things uh, will also work but if you have beads now you should be able to put it um because this cap is sealed with plastic and so what we're going to do is i am going to take my tube, and just for presentation purposes, I actually covered it with some uh, cool looking paper. Um, you don't have to do this, but it just makes your kaleidoscope look a bit nice, it makes it look nicer. And you're gonna take in your cap and you're going to, oh wait, most important part, you have to put in this aluminum tube, make sure it's pretty snug, so we get this on the inside and you can all see it 
Then once we have our cap with the beads inside, we're going to insert it on the other end. And now we have our kaleidoscope and you can kind of look on the inside and preferably uh, you can try looking at it um, through some light. Now you may notice that uh, the aluminum makes the images through the kaleidoscope seem a bit blurry, but that's normal because we're losing because we're using aluminum, right? We're not using mirrors and aluminum isn't as reflective as a mirror, but nevertheless, it's really good. Um, it's a really good model and the end results can actually look quite nice. And if you want to decorate it, you can do the same as well. Okay, so how is everyone doing so far with the activity? My kaleidoscope looks really good. I really like how it came out. Um, I see Mike in the chat is asking, I don't get how you folded it into a triangular prism. So Mike, uh, you're going to want to take your paper and your aluminum foil, and when you have them together with tape, you fold three times. Um, you fold once in and then another in, and then you put those two folds together, kind of like standing it up like a triangle. And you can tape those two folds together to keep the triangle um, together. Hopefully that helps. You can always rewind the live event to see how Viva did it. So you can always refer back in the video. Yeah, so here is your kaleidoscope. Um, you can make it, you can customize it um, in any way you want, and it's really cool. And now to wrap this activity up, we will explore whatever we have learned so far. So um, what you can do is you can look at your kaleidoscope and move it around and based on what beads um, or anything that you put in your cap, um, you will be able to see different colors. And does anyone know how our eyes work to see these colors? What cells are used um, to see color? This is going to be the best educated guess you've ever heard, but um, color cells. Yeah, exactly. Right. So um, as we learned earlier, the retina is made up of cone and rod cells. And cone cells are responsible for us being able to see color. So you can think of it or remember it as C for color, cone cells. That will make it easy to remember. And kaleidoscopes also have mirrors that reflect the images of the beads. So just like how you can see yourself in the mirror, kaleidoscopes also do the same. So how does light help see yourself in the mirror? That is a very interesting question. Well, it is an interesting question, but it has to do with basically how a mirror works. So light is hitting the mirror and light also hits your eye. So together, your eyes and the mirror um, create an image that you're able to see. And so finally, um, to bring everything all together, 
um, how do the brain and eye work together to help us see? Now that we have learned about the eye and we've gone through this together, um, what do people have to say about this? Oh, I can't wait to hear some answers or see some answers in the chat, but I'll take a guess. So the eye structure allows light to pass through and then the cells inside of the eyes work with the brain to produce an image. Is that kind of right? Yeah, that's pretty spot on. And um, it gives a very good idea of um, how different components of the eye work together. So we know that light is really important and certain structures within the eye are really important for us to see. So how would you describe the eye's um, structure? Like what parts of the eye are like really important to us? Mm, looks like everyone's busy doing that triangle still. Um, Lily, what do you think? If you're still there. Hmm. Let's see, what structures of the eye are important? I mean, I like all of my eye. I want all of it there. So, I mean, I think every structure is important. Yeah. Would you say maybe the people? Yeah. yeah, 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 I think that too. Yeah, so the pupil is definitely like really important. And, you know, rod and cone cells that help us see color, but really the eye in general is just such an interesting organ um, that we all um, have. And for now, that does conclude our journey with the eye cell, with the organ. So if anyone has any further questions, um, that should be pretty much it for today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Viva, and the BIT project team. I'm going to take over uh, just to wrap everything up. So let me share my screen with everyone. And yeah, all right. Thank you so much, Bit Project team. We really appreciate you, you all, uh, being here and providing such a great lesson for us all. So, let me go ahead and wrap up. All right. So, leave us some feedback, everyone. Um, here's the QR code again. You can scan it with your phone. You can take a picture of it right now, but you can even upload pictures of your project so that Bit Project can see them. So go ahead and do that. And then next week, join us for the next Bit Project event. And next week, we are going to study strong structures. Lily, what's that all about? So we'll be doing another physics event. Well, physics and engineering. So you'll be using your creative minds to build strong structures out of toothpicks, maybe some gun drops. And wow. Yeah. That Creative. seems really interesting. Awesome. Well, I'm going to uh, be at that event too, and you all can join it by signing up now at www.aka.ms forward slash DITPRJ. We'll put that in the Q&A. But on behalf of the Microsoft team here in Silicon Valley and Bit Project, thank you so much for attending today's event. I hope you guys have all a great weekend, a great evening, a great morning, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Thank you.